Hola. Do you want to take questions or something? I think it might be better if I took yeah. Do you want me to talk for another five minutes or stop? Take questions for five minutes, okay? I'm just conscious of that. I've talked a lot. <laughs> when you speak of a covenant, would it be the same covenant in all the churches of the Anglican communion or who want it to be in communion with the Archbishop would uh, agree to that covenant? Or would different churches have different covenants with the Archbishop? No, there's, there's one covenant. And the covenant is not just with the Archbishop covenant is with one another. And there's one text which is now out there for consideration and adoption. So your choice is basically yes, we are, or no, we aren't. Yeah, that, that's true at this stage. Though I think, um, first of all, there was huge consultation with the problems all along. So the text that's out there has had a really strong affirmation and very little real rejection from the nature. But anyhow, it still is open for decision. Um, Depending on how that process goes, if in the end of the day many churches do not accept the covenant, it might be possible that we might look again, A, at the notion of having a covenant, and secondly, see whether in fact it was the text of the one on the table that was the problem. But at the moment, it's this is the covenant, do you adopt it or do you not? That's the question. Yeah. And you can find the text, it's on the website. What you see is the timeline. Yeah. What's the goal? Okay. The, we said we don't have a firm timetable, um, but we said the first horizon would be the meeting of the ACC at the end of 2012, which gives a, a full three years of the cycle to see where we are. We're going to look at it after the ACC meeting, which takes place in October 2012. It takes place in New Zealand. Uh, the reason for that is that most churches of the Anglican Communion work on a three-year cycle. Your general conventions every three years. That's quite common. There's a few who work right on a longer cycle. I think the church in Congo does every five years. Some work every two years. My own church meets every year. So let's see how we're getting on after three years of the covenant. We should have some sort of feel. Already some churches have already adopted. Uh, a few, three, have adopted already. But let's see where we are. We're not trying to pressure anyone but to see where we are. And then I think I'd expect another phase to be Say, look, we're looking at it again in another two years. That's just roughly the case. Yeah. Have Sorry. you seen any lessening in the overall number of churches that we saw right after the Episcopal Church took its stand? Closing? Yes, I do. Um, I think one of the. Uh, there's a lot of anger at the time around. But no doubt. Um, and that, but when you get into it, um, the anger operates at many levels, but one of the levels was, I think, a profound, mis a f a profound uh, not understanding of the way in which different churches of the communion's processes work. Um, in, and this came up at the primates meeting in Dublin recently, um, where primates in some provinces have a lot of authority and they can sort of make decisions and veto things and so on. And other primates have very little authority. My own church, the primate, is really only the spokesman of the General Synod. And most of the time, he's the Bishop of Armagh. He's got a diocese, he runs a diocese, but he's often called upon to be the one who presides the Synod and to be the spokesman for us. He actually has very little authority, even in suggesting names fully for commissions and so on. He can't do it, he's got to go to it. Other churches have. So that was one of the issues where the anger came about. We've, I think the other thing is that I think the events, the, the rows and so on, and the, the arguments, actually caused a lot of people suddenly to take their membership of the Anglican Communion seriously. For good or ill. I mean, someone was saying, why are we in this? Let's get out, or something like that. But actually, and I think people have been looking very hard at what it is to be a member of the Anglican Communion today. And a lot of dioceses, including this one, have been working hard to build relationships across the world. And part of those relationships are about exploring different perspectives on, on different issues. So I think communion has been strengthened. I think a certain amount of the heat has gone out of it. But I would have to say that um, one of the requests that was made in the Windsor report was that while we're in this process of discernment, everyone hold back for a while. Please hold back. And everyone was asked to just hold back. No more interventions, 
please don't authorize same-sex blessing, please don't elect any more bishops in same-sex relationships. And I have to say that the election of Mary Glasgow in Los Angeles really didn't help. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you may take your own position on it, I'm not trying to, yeah. but I'm just saying, from a communion point of view, when things were beginning to calm down, a little bit more rationality in how we're talking, it really didn't help. But that's a personal thing. I would like to ask, is the Anglican communion a growing in number? Yeah, it is, yeah. Pretty hard to estimate that. It's about a million a year growing. Most of that growth is in Africa. Uh, yeah, uh, but it's a very fast growth in some areas. Yeah. And new dioceses are being formed all the time. Uh, I think we also recognize that it is uh, shrinking bodies within the Western, Western world. Uh, but that's along with other church life. Uh, there are falling numbers, but they're more than compensated by the growth within, particularly in Africa, but in other parts of the world as well. Which is seeing a profound shift in the, or the center of gravity of the Anglican community. Why do you think that? To analyze the decline in church belonging in the Western world is beyond me, right? Is beyond me. I think I'd need to be a big sociologist, and I don't see anyone's got a big answer. I think it's a complex set of answers there. I do think um, uh, in Africa, the churches have been extraordinarily good in organize their evangelical outreach, particularly to un un unreached peoples. And that's where the growth really is. Um, we in the Western world tend to see church growth happening with people who have either lapsed membership of the Christian churches uh, and no longer belong to anything really, or are coming from another Christian tradition. In African and other contexts, like that Asian context, it's about people reaching out to people who are not Christian at all. And that's certainly a huge problem. There. But I couldn't, you know, I don't know. I can't answer the question why. I'd like to ask Yeah, okay. Right. I am very loving of the Word of God. And I feel that the Anglican Church is the Word of God. And I'm afraid of holding it up with bigger love, enthusiasm, that it is the divine Word of God rather than just a cultural I feel that the churches where the courage to say this is the divine word of God grow more. And yeah. I have a feeling that's going on in that. Okay, and, but also that's why what I call the Bible, what we call the Bible in the Life of the Church project around the communion is trying to encourage engagement with scripture at every level of the church. And that's been very successful. And all the churches are buying into it and really trying to, trying to work. Not to say what ought our, understand, our role of the Bible in the life of our church to be, but what is the role of the Bible in the life of our church? And to try to take that very, very seriously. That was one of the recommendations from the Windsor Report, one we're taking very seriously. Some very good meetings involved in that. Yeah. The University of Suwami is the one that's hugely helping us within the US and uh, engaging with that.